All right, nice to have you with us. Welcome in to the CBS News Minnesota Morning Update. One of my favorite parts of the day. I hope you enjoy it as well. I'm Jason DeRussia. Uh, we have a huge team. Chris, how many people put this thing together? It's one. It's just Chris. It's just one person. And what I do is mostly screw it up. And I do it for you guys. That's why. How about this? Should we show you the weather? Boop. There it is. Uh, this is what we are claiming is a nice day. Do you believe it? Do you buy it? We're doing our best because the weather has been straight trash, just absolute trash. And today it's only going to be like 10 degrees below the average high. But look, there's a little peak of sun. I see the sun out there right now, actually. Looks beautiful. What's the temperature right now? Oh, 30, 32, 34. Yeah, we're getting there, though. And the good news is this Saturday, hey, it might be in the 70s. It might be in the 70s. And it's probably going to rain. But 70s. Okay, let's talk about this. Big news breaking in the late night hours yesterday that the, a judge uh, threw out the mask mandate. Uh, the judge basically saying, look, the CDC does not have the power uh, as an agency to kind of put out a mask mandate for the transportation system. And so, you know, the president maybe could have done this or Congress could have done this or a different agency could have done this, but the CDC doesn't have the power. And so mask mandate is gone. Show you this video from a Southwest Airlines flight because uh, people just started ditching their masks midair. Um, you know, a lot of people, people are in different spots on this, right? The truth is air planes have been proven to be one of the safest places during COVID. Even though you feel like you're in this confined tube, there's such an exchange of air that happens in an airplane and intense filtration systems that there really haven't been many cases uh, ever verified to have been spread from on board a plane. We we're out at MSP airport this morning. We wondered kind of what are people going to do? And we saw a mixed bag. Uh, several airlines, including Delta, American United, Sun Country, and Southwest, all dropped their mask mandates. It's optional. You still, of course, can wear a mask, and you should, if you feel uh, that that's important, if that makes you feel better, if you feel that that protects you in some way, do it. It's your life. Wear a mask. This may be a permanent part of your existence. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. And so our question is this. What are you going to do? If you were on a flight today, would you wear one or would you not? Uh, I'll share what I would do and look forward to hearing your feedback. No wrong answer, right? Like whatever you feel safe. Uh, there was a woman on Twitter who said that she was concerned because she's going on a flight Friday, uh, said this to me, that she was going on a flight Friday with her five-year-old who is not vaccinated. And I, I feel for parents with uh, young kids but you should at least consider that airplanes are, well, they're among the safest place, places out there because of that constant circulation and exchange of air. Metro Transit following the TSA uh, decision as well as the TSA said, you know, this whole thing, sort of amazing, right, that one judge can do this. This is one judge. Um, so mass mandate over for buses and light rail riders in uh, our area. When the agency kind of sent out their decision, they did note that the CDC does still recommend wearing masks while using public transportation. If I were on a bus, I don't know. Like you go to a sporting event, you don't need, I don't, who knows, right? If you're sick, don't go out. How about that? That seems like the best advice. Let's talk about Uber and I don't think I've heard what Lyft is doing, but Uber dropped their mask rules. So I bet a lot of drivers are still going to wear it, um, but passengers, you do not have to. I don't know what the right way to deal with this is. If I were taking an Uber, I would ask my driver, what do you prefer, right? It's about courtesy at a certain point, respecting what other people want. That's all. Uh, the company is letting 
passengers back in the front seat again, only if they're in a large group and there's not enough space in the back. I probably haven't taken an Uber since COVID started. Yeah, we have not had the best biking weather. Let me check because nice rides are supposed to be out today. Not yet. Not yet. That was journalism right there. Hope you enjoyed that. Nice ride. Bikes are returning to the streets in Minneapolis starting today. So you'll see kind of these green bikes and the blue bikes will be back out there. You can rent them for $250 a trip. Um, have you ever taken a nice ride? So I haven't tried the blue ones, the motorized ones. I've tried the green one, and I feel like it was quicker for me to walk. It's a heavy bike. It's really heavy, and I love to bike. I am excited that the scooters are back. I think you guys know this about me. I do love uh, tooling around the city in a scooter. So as soon as those scooters are out, I will be going to Rise Bagels to get some bagels for everybody here. Uh, on the team, so I will do that. Uh, but I have to do I have to do this first, so I can't go get breakfast until after this. We're excited about the Timberwolves. Uh, welcome the bandwagon if you're new on board. Always room on the bandwagon. Don't let like the longtime fans keep you off. There's always room to jump in and celebrate and have fun. And the game two is tonight. Minnesota leads the series one game to zero. Tonight's game is in Memphis. Tips off at 7:30. This WCCO tw uh, Facebook update. Hope you're following us on Facebook. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns talking about Ant. He is a special talent. When he's playing basketball at this kind of level, he's almost unstoppable. He is unstoppable. Anthony Edwards, so great in game one. So can't wait for game two tonight. Late start. It's uh, 8.30 uh, tonight, or is it 7.30? 7.30 tonight? 7.30. Uh, Minneapolis at 6.30 for game three on Thursday. Some state fair news that just came out within the last uh, 25 minutes. A couple new grandstand shows announced. Are you ready? Which one are you buying tickets for? The Counting Crows. Now, these two shows, these sound like state fair shows, right? Counting Crows, they were hot in the early 90s. They are going to be Friday, August 26th. And then REO Speedwagon and Styx. I would go to both of these shows, to be honest. They both sound pretty fun. They'll be Thursday, September 1st. Tickets for both shows go on sale Friday at noon. Didn't they announce? I think I was off on Friday when they announced. Is Pitbull? Is Pitbull performing at the State Fair? Mr. Worldwide. That's my man. Come on. You know how amazing. I wish we could play a little Pitbull for you. Uh, we're broke. We don't have the money. We don't have the budget for the rights to that. We only play one song, and it's the song we play during feedback. So stand by for that in just a minute. Street sweeping time of the year. It's happening in Minneapolis, but probably your suburbs are doing it too. Uh, today is the first day for Minneapolis, and they bring out the big old truck with the giant sweeper, and it makes us wonder, where does the debris go? What are they what doing? What happens to all the stuff it collects? So we collect it all, and we bring it to a, a dump site, and then it, it sits for a, long, for a while to it uh, compost, and then we, use, then we uh, get it trucked out to a landfill, and they use it on top coat. So that's it. It's not that exciting. I don't know why anyone cares. There are certain things that I really don't care about, and I know you guys do, so I'm happy to find answers. But, like, who cares? Like, do you really care where, like, the little leaf debris and the dirt and the rocks and the salt and the where it goes? Like, who, who cares? I don't know. Ron, people care. I guess. I don't know. I, I, do, I do like knowing how it works. So those bristles on the outside are made of steel and they kind of, what they do is they sweep. They're called a street sweeper. And they sweep it to an inner thing, which then sweeps it up into the thing. There it is. All right. Are we, are we more interested in what happens to stuff they sweep off the street? By the way, one thing that I think we didn't mention in that street sweeper story that's sort of interesting is the reason cities all uh, have to do this is federal law. So you have to clean the streets. And it's not about like making the streets clean. It's about making sure this stuff doesn't wash into the sewers and then go into your uh, lakes and rivers and stream. So that's really what street sweeping is about. And by law, I believe they have to do it twice a year. So there's some news you can use. 
how about this? I'm fascinated to see what researchers are going to find about these absolutely crazy Minnesotans. The Star Tribune reporting that a group from Rockefeller University in New York are curious as to what is happening on Lake Harriet in Minneapolis when these people do wait for it, wait for it, keep waiting for it. We're almost there that this, this is what they do every day, all winter long. This guy takes his shirt off. Some lady has her camera and they, they're just like chillaxing. Researchers study molecular metabolism and they're interested in, <laughs> look at these two. I mean, you got to find your inner peace, however, however, it, whatever it takes, I guess. Here's the problem. So researchers are going to look at the molecular biology. Like they'll take a blood sample this summer from the 70 some people who do this. Then they'll compare it to winter samples when they're back in the freezing water and see like, does something happen with the blood chemistry? Very interesting to check that out. So there you go. Uh, don't you think like if you're someone who jumps in a freezing lake every day during winter, you might do other weird stuff too. I don't know if you're able to like, can you control for what other weird stuff those 70 people are doing every day? I don't know. Whatever they might be ingesting in their body, it's none of my business. Minnesota is known as the, known as the land of the 10,000 lakes. And this uh, is a story about internet culture and taking something annoying and turning it into a piece of joy. It's pretty big. It's small today, but uh, I've seen it span the whole lot. Sometimes it's even worse when it's when it's rained or snowed. Um, so usually I have to kind of go around it. Uh, they call it Lake Chipotle. It's in an uptown parking lot along Hennepin Avenue. I know some of you watching this might be wondering, Jason, what are the hipsters up to? And here's what they're up to. They created a Twitter and a Facebook and a website for Lake Chipotle instead of maybe doing that for like a charity who needs some help. But now we have a website for a puddle. Uh-huh. Lake Chipotle. I mean... Some people might look at this and say this is a poorly engineered parking lot that could probably use a drain. And others are saying it's a lake. Very, very strange. Here is this video from Priscilla Mitchell. We love when you send us cool video, and I, I absolutely love this. What a fun thing to witness. Look at him go. Bloop. Bloop. Did you get it? Did you get the fish? Who got it? Anybody get the fish? Looks like we didn't get the fish. This is how I fish, by the way. Throw in, throw in the, uh, cast out the rod and come up with nothing. <laughs> it's sort of amazing how they're synchronized. Like it's just captivating to watch this. I don't know why it's so interesting. This, but it is, I love it. See, you can't, can you ever really figure me out? Would, which of these two stories would you guess that I would have liked more? Uh, pelicans uh, doing synchronized fishing or Lake Chipotle. Well, you probably could have guessed. You probably could have guessed which one would drive me nuts. Let's talk about masks at the airport. If you're going fly them, what are you doing? I personally would not wear a mask on the plane. I think, uh, well, sometimes maybe in the boarding line where it's like you people can't wait to get in line and 150 people gathered around the desk. If I worked at the airport, I might uh, be a little slower about making a change, but uh, that's kind of where I am. But I totally get that people are all over the place. Let's roll it. And here's Trisha, going to keep wearing a mask for a while yet. Her honey has a compromised immune system. Yeah, courtesy. I, boy, Trisha, I, that is the guiding principle for me. Somebody wants me to wear a mask, 100% going to do it. Not going to ask why. Happy to make everyone feel comfortable. Thanks, Trisha. Hope your honey's all right. Kevin got vaccinated in South Lee, so no, I don't think I would. Kevin not planning on flying anytime soon. I just flew, I will say, like wearing a mask for an entire, for a three hour flight. Um, it's fine. Like, I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. Like, all right, Kevin, thank you. It seems kind of silly, like if you can go to a Timberwolves game and be surrounded by 19,000 screaming people. 
that you have to wear a mask on an airplane that has constant filtration of the air. Suzanne is reassured about that filter system in an airplane, so I'll be happy to not wear a mask. Yeah, that's where I'm at, Suzanne. Thank you. Here's Kimberly. If requested, I'll put it on, but otherwise don't feel like I need one. I'm fully vaccinated. We have no young children in our home. I tell you, we have the smartest uh, viewers on the CBS News Mo uh, Minnesota Morning Update. Because it really is about like analyzing your situation, considering your tolerance for risk, maybe considering how effective you think masks are in protecting you. And then courtesy, being nice to other people. I love you guys. Thanks, Kimberly. Here's Annette. I will only wear a mask in a very crowded situation. Yeah, in an airplane I would. Well, I tell you, Annette points out there are many people getting sick from airplanes, and there are illnesses that go around airplanes. COVID doesn't seem to be one of them, but boy, you do hear the coughing and the sniffling, and there is something about wearing masks. It certainly protects you from some of the other stuff that normally goes around. Good stuff. All right, everybody do your best. That's all we can do every day. You do your best. Be as nice as you can and respectful to other people, and uh, we'll, we'll get through it together, won't we? Thanks, everybody, for watching the Morning Update. We'll see you tomorrow.